On today's episode, we're going to take a look at the tight front and how you can use it uh, in the context of a Canadian defense to help you create um, better angles to perimeter plays and also force the offense to operate in less space. So here we have uh, just drawn up a really simple version of what a lot of people call the tight front. Um, there's a few different ways you can get into a tight front. What it really means is that you're taking your defensive ends and you're reducing them down inside into what we call a four-eye technique uh, or playing shaded on the inside shoulder of the tackle. Okay, Your nose is going to align head up on the center. Your mic is usually going to be stacked on him. A few different things you can do with him. Okay, And your other defensive end will again be in that four-eye technique uh, shaded on the inside shoulder of the tackle. Usually in a tight front, I like to bring one of the two edge defenders. Okay, here we have our dollar blitzing off the edge um, to create that fourth rusher in a pass rush. Okay, and what the dollar does is a it allows you to play with three defensive linemen on the field if you're, uh, you know, a team where your linebacker group or your DB group um, is deeper than your defensive line group, or maybe you got some injuries in the front and you don't feel like you have four down defensive linemen you can roll out there, snap in and snap out. Um, it's a way for you to play out of a thirty personnel or a, a, a four linebacker, uh, three down lineman personnel. Um, the other thing it really allows you do, to do is cover space. So we see here how on a Canadian field, we are in a spread set, five receivers. One of the main things you want to do is force that quarterback to make difficult throws. One of the easiest ways to do that is to force the ball to the perimeter of the field, make them make longer throws, give you more time to rally the football. Okay, When you play in a base front, so I'm just going to move into what would be more of a typical alignment. Say here's your, your typical strong front or 40 front where you got your three tech to the field, your one tech in the boundary. This would be your will, okay? Um, and you're in a situation where you have everybody covered down, your numbers are fine, you can play three on two to the boundary and four on three to the field and your mic can drop base on the back or take the middle of the field, however it is you play that. One of the things you're giving here is kind of two immediate bubbles to the defense. Okay, if you want to play three high or, or quarters, you're going to give up at least two immediate bubbles to the defense. The first of which, being here, we have this drawn up as if you're we playing cut to the boundary. Okay, you're giving up some space uh, there in the flat if you wanted to play hold coverage to force the ball to the perimeter. Now you're giving up that bubble to the sideline, okay, which isn't a super long throw um, into the boundary, okay, and then to the field. Again, usually we see you can play either hold or cut to the field. You're going to give up that bubble, whether you're giving it up because you're in hold, forcing the ball to the sideline, or you're playing some sort of cut variation and you're giving up that bubble on the inside. Either way, when you when you have three high players. Okay, or in some cases, even four high players, you're playing a quarter structure or you're going to cut and carry a corner, say, in the boundary. You're giving up immediate space that the offense can attack. Now, you're also taking things away. Um, you know, Obviously, playing defense is a game of give and take. You're always taking away what you feel is the priority, and the offense is going to try and attack the space that you give them. But... In this structure, you are giving up two bubbles. Now, usually that bubble to the field, you can often say, okay, you know what? We're going to force them to make that long throw to the field, uh, and that's going to give us um, you know, a, some peace of mind in terms of we're making them make a hard throw. We're okay with giving that up. I totally understand that. One of the things that often teams do to do that is they'll play cut in the boundary because you don't want to give up an easy throw to this boundary side wide receiver. Oftentimes that boundary wide out's your best receiver. Um, you don't want to just be able to let the quarterback play throw and catch there. So you're going to have this corner play up, play cut and carry, however it is you do that. That's going to create this soft bubble here in the defense. And now the teams are starting to RPO. They're putting this player in a bind. They're going to show him a run action and force him to fill and then throw the ball into that window that he should be dropping to to take away in the pass game. The idea with the tight front is you're able to kick that end back inside, 
and start with that conflict player, that player who's in the bubble in the boundary uh, or to the field. We'll show you how you do it both ways. Uh, you're starting him out of the box. Now his run responsibility is going to be that C gap. So if he gets any sort of run action, okay, or he's going to be the contained player, that C gap player, he's going to play that from depth. If it's pass, he's already into his drop. Okay, and you see how this takes away that bubble for the quarterback. Okay, here, even if he's playing inside leverage, right on uh, on this inside uh, number two receiver. Okay, he can split the difference, or depending on down and distance, you can cheat him as far out as you want to. Essentially, though, you're able to play both the C gap and this hook to curl zone uh, from that location on the field much better than you can if you start in an A gap or B gap and have to drop to that side. So in terms of your pass rush distribution, you know that's probably a whole other conversation, but usually we like to bring one guy off one edge okay, and play that conflict player out of the box to the other side. This quick, if it's pass, will work up that B gap, and when he recognizes pass, try and contain uh, from there, or you can even slant him away. Um, there's a lot you can do with him there. So that's the basic reason why teams are running the tight front because they want to take away those inside throws while keeping the vertical routes capped by these vertical players. So your boundary half, your free safety, um, you know, you might rotate to quarters with that boundary corner. However it is that you play your quarters or your cover three, we don't want those guys having to come down to take away space. We want to take away space with the underneath defenders. And by starting with that will linebacker, or we call him the star, outside the box, that allows him to defend that space from where he is at the snap of the ball as opposed to having to get to that space post-snap. Okay, so we're spreading the field, we're taking away space, um, and now most teams are going to look at that box and say, okay, we're going to try and run the football to get them out of this look. How do we stop the base kind of run game you're going to see in the Canadian game? We're going to start with the zone run fit. So here are two outside linebackers. We call them the dollar and the star. They're going to be your edge players. So whether they're blitzing or not, they are going to set the edge on any block they get. Here we get a zone block from the tackle. He's working out to that dollar. Okay, in this case, in this case, the dollar is going to set the edge on that zone. He owns the C gap. Our rush and our quick, they're the B gap players. So that this rush is going to work to penetrate as that as that tackle steps out, he's getting worked on by the guard. He's going to look to work that one yard up field and set the B gap. Okay, that's going to force the ball back up inside to our stack between the mic and the nose. Now, we call that stack between the mic and the nose um, a lag. So they're going to lag, the nose, sorry, is going to lag behind the block of the center. So as the center steps to his right with the zone to, to work some kind of combination with the guard to the mic, the nose is going to fly straight up the field. That's going to force the center to hang on this block. If the center hangs on that block, the mic who's filling the front side shoulder of the center, he's going to be there to make that play. If the, if the center works off of the nose onto the mic, now that guard's in a really tough spot to try and cut this nose off. That nose should be able to make the play. Okay, even further than that, now this guard is, is chasing the nose, chasing the nose. This backside four eye technique is not going to let himself get reached out of that B gap by the tackle. He's going to stay right on the hip of that guard, and that's going to bring him right to that cutback lane for the tailback. Okay, and then the star linebacker is also playing uh, the C gap on this side. In this case, we had a zone read action. He is the quarterback player. So your end on the back side should be able to take away that cut back from the back. Your nose and the mic are forcing the ball to either cut back or spill out towards that B and C gap. So we'll take a look here at a two back run fit. So now as they add a second back, we add our Sam or our X linebacker to the box. Here I have the same play drawn up. They're just going to lead a fullback on that front side defensive end. When we get two back, the mic and the X are gonna do what's called stringing the back. 
So we see here as the fullback walks up pre-snap, that X linebacker, because the fullback's walking up to his side, is going to take the inside shoulder of the fullback. Okay, and the mic is now going to get pulled to that stack alignment he was in in the first uh, the first drawing there, and he's going to work that lag technique with the nose. Okay, so because the fullback came to the mic side, sort of the X's side, the X is going to cancel the inside shoulder of the fullback, and the mic is going to play in the lag technique with the nose. Nothing changes here for anybody else. Our dollar is still going to set the edge. So when that fullback adds, he's going to set the edge on that fullback. And our star, who's that backside C-gap player, he's responsible for the quarterback if this gets pulled. Okay, no change in responsibility inside the box um, for any of the down linemen. Nose is still lagging behind the center. Okay, and the R and the Q are two defensive ends who are playing in the B gaps, they're still staying true to that B gap, not getting reached by the backside player. Okay, they should be in a great position if this thing either cuts back or gets pushed to the front side to make that play. Okay, subtly different back action here. Again, we're in a two back situation. What if we get some sort of cross action or the, the full back changes side post snap or even motion? Okay, we note here the fullbacks lined up pre-snap into the boundary side. That's the side here with our star in this case, our dollars to the field. Okay, again, the mic and the X are going to string the fullback. When the fullback lines up in the boundary, the mic is going to motion to the boundary with the fullback and line up on his inside shoulder. This puts our X linebacker now in the leg with the nose. Now on the snap of the ball here, this is the fullback crossing the set to block that backside C-gap player. Now the Mike and the X are going to string with him to the field. And now this is really no different than the last one. That fullback is blocking that uh, dollar linebacker. He's going to set the edge. In this case, the zone's going to the boundary, so he's going to have the bootleg if there is one. Okay, our X who's now moved with the fullback across the set, is going to fit that backside C gap, the inside shoulder of the fullback. Our star is still the edge player, and now the action of the fullback pulls the mic back into the leg with the nose because the guard is stepping to the, the mic's side. He's going to fill that weak side A gap, the nose is going to penetrate straight ahead. That puts him into the backfield um, in the backside hip of that center running that lag technique. Nothing changes for our quick or for our rush. Quick look at what that looks like film wise. Okay, here we got Georgia playing some tight front against LSU. You'll notice that LSU has a fullback. Uh, lined up almost in a tight end set there, just off the line of scrimmage to the field. For them, this is their star to the field. He's off the ball. Here's their dollar. All right, he's the one blitzing off the boundary side edge. Those are our two edge players. And you'll notice here with the fullback to the field, their two linebackers are now pulled to the field. So this uh, X is on the inside shoulder of the tight end. Okay, and this mic is now pulled into the lag technique with the nose. So you see as it plays through there, the star is setting the edge. He doesn't do a great job of doing that aggressively, but he should be setting that edge. Okay, and then that forces the running back back inside, ultimately to the mic, who's playing the front side shoulder of the center. See it from the tight here. Okay, here we see the mic. We would have him totally stacked. All right, him and the nose do a great job in this lag technique. The nose, see here, is on the backside shoulder of the center. That puts the guard in a very tough spot. It's going to allow our mic to run over the top and make this play. Okay, here's a second look. This is that split zone look or um, slice zone action where the fullback is going to work opposite the direction of the zone. 
So the zone is working this way. The fullback is going to cross the set and block the backside player. And you see here as the fullback comes across, the star is going to set the edge. These two in the middle, the two inside linebackers, the X and the Mike, are going to string that fullback. So now uh, their X is on the inside shoulder of the fullback, and the Mike is fitting off of the lag technique with the nose. Forces the cut back, and the X is there on the inside shoulder of the fullback. So looking at it from the opposite perspective, again, nothing's changing in the front in terms of the fit. These two are going to be our B-gap players. Okay, they're going to stay true in that B-gap. The nose here, as the, as the center works to his left shoulder, is going to work straight up the field, putting him in that weak A-gap. Okay, as the fullback crosses the set to block that star linebacker, The mic is going to ultimately work to the front side A gap, okay, and our X is going to work to the inside shoulder of the fullback. In this case, again, the dollar, he's our edge player, he's setting the edge. Fullback crosses the set. We see 32 in the lag. 30 is a little bit late. He's hesitating because it looks like 89 might be about to get reached. But 89 ultimately does a good enough job, forces it back to 30. Who's able to clean this thing out and make the tackle. Okay, now before we get to that clip, we're going to look at the X's and O's of what if we get a puller. So I just drew up a simple power here. Again, our star and our dollar are always going to set the edge. So as that fullback comes up, the star is going to come down and set the edge on his outside shoulder, force the ball back inside. Okay, our nose, as the center steps this way, is still working backside of the center. Okay, he winds up in a actual play side A gap here because the nose is blocking, the center is blocking back. Okay, our quick and our rush are going to stay in the B gaps. Now as this B gap pulls, this rush can try and chase that thing down with the puller. Some people teach you can play it over the top. However you want to teach your defensive end to do that. But he's in a great position to chase that puller. Okay, our dollar would be the edge player on the opposite side. He'd have the bootleg if it presented itself. And then the key to this fit is the two inside linebackers, the Mike and the X. The Mike is going to get pulled to the uh, boundary side here with the fullback. Okay, so he's just following the fullback. He hasn't even seen the puller yet. He's fitting the inside shoulder of that fullback. Our X is going to read the puller, and he's now going to fit the inside shoulder of that puller. So anytime you have a pulling lineman, uh, you're going to have to move responsibilities from one side of the formation to the other. In this case, all right, we're going to do that with our inside linebackers. So if we get power, we get one puller. Okay, our X is going to have to scrape over the top, and he's going to fit the inside shoulder of that puller. Taking a look at that here, Clemson's going to run a little power concept. Here they're running it at the dollar. He's going to set the edge, Okay, and you'll see the inside linebackers play the puller. little better view from the tight here so here's our dollar he's gonna set the edge on that fullback we're anchored here in the B gap and you're gonna see as this guard pulls that 32 and 30 are gonna fit that pulling guard One on the outside shoulder, one on the inside shoulder, and we got this thing fit up. You see here how that tight front presents challenges. Any team that wants to run pullers, okay, we're going to have a guy that can get in and chase that. Okay, we'll see number nine here work down the line of scrimmage and really take this space away. 
Okay, that's going to force them to probably try and double this back like this to prevent him from chasing it. Then they're never going to have anybody left without that double team working back to 30. He's always going to be able to work over the top and fit that. Edge player, okay, B gap, A gap, ultimately taking the opposite A gap as his B gap pulls, okay, and as his B gap creates an extra gap on this side, we have two fitters to fit that. Big coaching point, you almost see 30 get caught in it here. Don't step down too much because you'll get caught up in the wash. You got to get over the top and then fit that thing from depth. Okay, it gets shot down from the backside, but ultimately they have that thing fit up great on the front. That's how you can use the tight front. Um, it's a great little wrinkle that you can add into any defense because it's very simple for, for the guys in the front. If you can teach your nose to basically work straight up the field and your linebacker to chase the play side direction of the football, um, all they really need to be able to understand is when you get a puller like this power scheme we talked about, the, the backside linebacker has to go one gap over okay, as opposed to just fitting front side on the center. Um, but it's a great way to take away space in the Canadian game and still be really solid in your run fit.